www.medialanatomyseminars.com. Um, we have a case here of medial tibial stress syndrome in a soccer player. Um, now, uh, old conventional wisdom uh, would, uh, would point the finger in medial tibial stress syndrome problem at the soleus or various other muscular insertions um, into the tibia. Uh, now, what we know intuitively, if we know our anatomy very well, is that the soleal muscles, if you just come down in here, make attachment up in this region in here, as do the flexor digitorum longus, uh, and for that matter, the flexor hallucis longus. Where the pain is with medial tibial stress syndrome is actually in the distal third of the tibia where no muscular attachments lie. Um, so that theory is kind of out the window with regards to what's the cause of medial tibial stress. Uh, now, going uh, to the next theory that's come out is the fascial attachments into the periosteum of the bone are causing um, an enthesopathy, so to speak, um, by the fascia tugging at the bone, um, which is a good theory. Uh, it still comes into play. You still get a lot of fascial adhesion, fascial tightness that can lead to that. Um, so that's one of the theories. The other theory that's occurring here is the, the theory of, of bone bowing. Uh, so when you're running and when you're, you're constantly pounding on the bone, uh, the bone itself has to, get, has to have a little bit of give, so the bone bows. And as the bone bows, there's a theory that you're creating microfractures within uh, the superficial layers of the bone, and that is the, uh, that is the reason why we have medial tibial stress syndrome. Um, so one of the tests that I like to do in order to kind of differentiate whether it's a fascially related MTSS or a bone bowing problem, uh, if you go on your stomach, is this the test that I, that I guess I created uh, called the tibial bow test. So what I do is I just have the person on their stomach and I put all of my pressure on the person's calcaneus through the tibia and I ask if it reproduces pain in uh, the medial uh, tibia. Uh, this is a, a pretty well known, the bowing test is, is pretty well known when you're trying to diagnose fractures whereby if the fracture is here, if you bow either side of that bone and you get pain in the middle, then it's a positive test. So I'm just kind of adapting that now to MTSS uh, for the tibial bowing test. So just from here, I'm just pushing down and seeing if it recreates the problem. Uh, aside from that, of course, palpation is going to be what's going to determine whether or not you have fascial restriction within the, 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 um, the cruel fascia or the fascia that's going to cover that medial aspect of the tibia. Um, so now I'm going to show you uh, a treatment that I utilize in order to treat that medial tibial fascial line Acupuncture. Okay, so what I'm going to use here is I'm going to use uh, what I like to refer to as myofascial needling. The reason I call it myofascial needling is because I'm going to utilize the needles uh, in order to uh, generate a tug or a pull, a directional pull on the fascial tissue. Uh, by doing that and, and, and generating pull on the fascial tissue, I'm going to influence the uh, intercellular connections from one cell to the other. Um, thereby signaling the entire fascial line to eventually release, uh, as per the work of, of Langevin, uh, who is the researcher that demonstrated the, um, the myofascial pull that can be generated through a needle by simply putting the needle into the tissue and twisting. By twisting, what Langevin discovered um, is that the fascial tissue will actually coil up around uh, the needle, similar to cotton candy would, uh, would coil around the, uh, the cardboard when you're when you're uh, in that machine or whatever. Uh, so by putting the needle in and twisting, uh, the uh, magnetic charge of the needle will grab onto the fascia and it'll allow me to coil. So if I if you can zoom in here, if I put one needle in here and I twist it one direction, and I put another, another needle in a little further up and I twist it another direction, you see how, can you see that? You see how you generate a constant tug on the fascia. So then I'll continue that on the next needle above that and I'm going to continue that line so I have uh, a line of tension uh, being generated by the needles, okay? I'm just going to do my needle insertions now. So I'm just behind the tibia into the crural fascia, or the tibia is the medial fascia of the lower leg. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with the needles is I'm going to twist them in uh, each one sequentially in opposite directions. So for the first one, I'm going to twist clockwise. And eventually when I twist the needle, I'm unable to twist anymore. That's because the fascia has now wound itself up the needle and I've maximally uh, taken tension within that fascia. 
And now the next needle I'm going to turn counterclockwise and do the same thing until I can't turn it anymore. Right there. And then the same for the next needle in a clockwise fashion. Counterclockwise fashion. And then clockwise fashion again. Periodically I'm going to come back in and I'm going to start to piston the needle to cause even more fascial pulls. And after I start pistoning the needle, it'll loosen up some, some fascia, and then I can tighten it up a little bit more. Uh, so the idea here is I'm doing a constant pull on the fascia uh, in order to influence um, the length of the fascia through intercellular, intercellular connections. Um, regarding medial tibial stress syndrome, uh, because um, we, we, it's, a, it's really a problem with the periosteum of the bone, uh, one of the things with medial tibial stress syndrome is I, is I treat it very aggressively in that this is one of the, the rare instances where I tell the athlete to remain off of activity until such time as the bone pain has, uh, has ceased um, because I do not want the medial tibial stress syndrome to then progress into a stress fracture, um, which is it, it, it's rare, but it is a possibility.